Hey guys, welcome back to my channel or welcome if you're new. So today we're going to be talking about Jesus teaching you not to worry. Okay, we're going to dissect a few scriptures together. So if you have a Bible, I encourage you to go get it. Even if you don't have a Bible, you can download the Holy Bible app and you can pull up the scriptures that I'm going to be going over and you want to read it along with me, right? Because one thing that I've learned is regardless of who it is that I'm learning from, I am going to go check that Bible and make sure that what you're saying is in here. Okay. I need to see it for myself. <laughs> so that is the season that you need to be in. Okay. Don't take my word for it, sis or bro. You go and check it out for yourself. Okay. So again, if you are new here, welcome. Make sure you give this video a thumbs up. Do not leave without subscribing. Comment below where you are watching from and let's get right into this. Right. So we're going to be going through a couple of verses here, but we're going to start with, uh, 33. Okay. So 33 says, but seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. Okay, so right here in this scripture, it is telling you, seek the kingdom. Seek the kingdom. And seeking the kingdom is not just, Father, you know, please help me. Do this for me. Do that for me. I remember my church told me this years ago, and I will never forget. I've been with the same church for about 12 years now. And I remember they had the, the apostle, right? She had said something like, a lot of times we get in the habit of being like, God, please, you know, give me this, give me that, help me, give me, give me, give me. And we constantly have our hand out, right? But sometimes what makes you think that God is not, not like, okay, I need you to give me too. Give me something in return, right? Give me your heart. Give me your mind. Seek me. Put me first. Read my Bible right? Apply these scriptures to your everyday life. None of us are perfect, but our goal should be each and every day, not to just say, oh yes, I pray. Yeah. I read the Bible from time to time. No, we need to be seeking the kingdom every single day. We need to be seeking the kingdom. The Bible is our weapon. The Bible is how the Lord speaks to us. The Bible is how we're going to continue to be able to fight against all of these, you know, demonic forces and spirits and things that come up against us in the spiritual realm when we stay in the word of God. Right. And so it's easy to say, give me, give me, give me. But sometimes the Lord is saying, I need you to give me something in return too. I need you to have faith. Can you just give me a little bit of faith? Can you show me just a little bit that you have faith? And so once you start to show God that you have faith, that is when he will begin to bless you. Sometimes the Lord is just waiting for you. Sometimes, not in all cases, okay? I'm just letting the Holy Spirit lead and guide me, um, but not in all cases. But sometimes the Holy Spirit does want you to um, give him something in return. So I want, I want you to ask yourself today, what area of your life can you say, I need to give this back to him? This depression, I give it back to him. I'm not drinking no more. I'm not smoking no more. This anxiety, I cast it out in the name of Jesus. I'm not using it as an excuse anymore to be sad and, you know, to drown myself in misery and to be partaking in gossip and being angry with others and having unforgiveness in my heart. That's it. I'm done. I'm giving it back to God, right? I'm giving him my heart. From this day forward, I'm going to seek him. I'm going to read my Bible. I'm going to worship him every single day. I'm going to go to church, right? That is seeking the kingdom, really giving it your all, and then all things will be added on to you. I can give you guys a testimony of when, actually, I have a couple of testimonies, but I'm going to talk about one in particular. I'm going to talk about when I was homeless. Listen, I was homeless. I'm talking about car breaking down every mile, no AC. I'm sweating. I'm asthmatic. I'm talking about no money in my bank account. I'm talking about sleeping on floors. I could have said, you know what? I'm not going to seek God anymore. I could have said, oh, God doesn't love me because why would he allow me to go through this? But I didn't. You know what I did? I did exactly what it tells me to do right here in Matthew chapter 6, verse 34, where it tells us, verse 30, uh, 33, excuse me, where it tells us, but seek first his kingdom and all things will be added onto him, onto you. Let me tell you, I still was going to church. I still was going to church. I will never forget. I drove my broke down car to church. At the end of the service, I got up. 
I went to go speak on the microphone and I said, God, even though I don't even know how my next meal is going to be, even though my husband and my kids and I, we're struggling, I'm still going to serve you and I'm still going to put you first, right? And I will never forget this day. I got up on the microphone, gave God the honor and the glory, right? And I felt good. I was like, yes. You know, I'm still giving God that first place. I'm showing him that even though I'm homeless, even though I feel like I'm lacking, I'm going to show him that I'm not going to just honor him when I have material things. I'm not going to just honor him when I have a place to stay, when I have money. Let me tell you something. It could happen to me all over again. And in the name of Jesus, I will still worship him. I will still praise him. I will still go to church. I will still preach his word and I will still keep him first. But let me tell you, I got up, I said the testimony, right? And in my church, they speak in prophecy. I get up, I go, to, I, I go get a prophecy because in my church, they give prophecy. And I'm thinking God is about to tell me something amazing. I'm like, yes, Lord, speak to me today. I need something to uplift me, Lord, please. And you know what he told me? He said, and you're going to struggle a little bit more. You have many of difficulties ahead that you will be facing, but don't worry because I will be with you. I kid, I kid you not, I can't remember what else God said that day because all I heard was more difficulties, more struggles, and I skipped the fact that he said he was going to be with me. The only thing I heard was more difficulties and more struggles, and I lost it. I left the church. I was so angry. I sat in my car screaming, crying, literally like, why, why, like crying, like heartbroken, like why would you do this to me? You know what I'm saying? And this is a testimony. This is real, y'all. But I cried it off that day. I remember going home to my husband, came home drenched in sweat because my car kept breaking down and it was, it was terrible, y'all. Like, and I know some of you guys may be like, well, why didn't you guys just get a job? There's a whole backstory on what happened at that season in our life that I won't get into in this video. Um, but we were just both struggling, right? This was um, five years ago. So I went home, my husband calmed me down. He said, you know, don't worry about it. Whatever it is that we go through, we'll go through it together. As long as we have each other and as long as we have God and we have our children, we're going to be fine. We're going to continue to go to church. We're going to continue to praise him. We're going to continue to keep him first and we're going to make it. He said he's going to be with you. And I was like, yeah, he did say he's going to be with me, but he said I was going to struggle more. Like, why would you tell me I'm going to struggle more? Like, I did not have faith. My faith was nowhere to be found, right? I was seeking the kingdom, but my heart wasn't there. Ooh, thank you, Holy Spirit. Now we're getting somewhere. So sometimes you can be seeking the kingdom, but your heart is not fully there. See, I was still going to church, and I was still worshiping and praising God, but the minute I didn't hear what I wanted to hear, the minute I didn't get the things that I wanted, oh, now I was angry again. Oh, now it's God's not listening to me. Oh, God's not listening to my prayer. I can't hear God, and now I'm all types of mad. What's in your heart? What are you feeling in your heart? What are you holding back from the Lord? Because here's the thing. Even if you don't say it out with your mouth, the Lord can see you. He can hear your thoughts. He knows exactly how you feel. He cannot hide anything from God. Nothing. So while you might be seeking him, he might be looking at you and saying, I see her seeking me, but what about this area of her life? What about that area of your life? God wants you to really come to him. I just realized I wasn't even looking at the right place. I'm supposed to be looking here. I'm sorry, guys. God wants you to really come to him and give him everything. Give him everything. Give him your heart. Give him your soul. Give him your mind. Give it all to him. All of it. As you're listening to me, I want you to start playing a worship song. And as you're receiving these words from the Holy Spirit, I want you to just start to praise him. Start to praise him. And when this video is over, I want you to go full-fledged, full-blown into worship mode for the Lord and watch what he will do for you. And now I want to reflect on 2 Chronicles chapter 1. So again, if you have your Bible, I want you to go there. And now I want to reflect on, again, 2 Chronicles chapter 1. And we're going to talk about how the Lord told Solomon Ask for what it is that you want, and I will give it to you, right? Ask me. Solomon could have asked the Lord for anything. He could have said, bless me with a new house. He could have said, bless me with a new car. He could have said, bless me with some more money. But you know what Solomon asked for? Solomon asked for wisdom. Mm. Come on, somebody. 
Solomon asked for wisdom and the Lord was pleased with that because he said, wow, out of all things, you asked for wisdom? And because he was pleased with that, he added on more to him. The Lord gave him honor. He gave him glory. He gave him riches. He gave him everything because he saw that Solomon had a good heart. He wasn't greedy, right? And also, sometimes we want God to bless us with certain things, but we don't have the wisdom, come on now, to be able to carry out that blessing. Some of us want wealth. We want wealth for our family, but when you get it, what are you going to do with it? Are you going to be responsible or are you going to go and blow it on partying and drinking and, and, and get a whole bunch of unnecessary things? God knows when you are ready for something. And sometimes it could simply be that the reason why he hasn't given it to you yet is because he knows that you weren't ready. Let me tell you, huh, two years ago, when I was in this specific company that I have me and my husband made over a million dollars with. Let me tell you, all that money, gone, gone. My husband and I had to start over from scratch, okay? We had to literally do it all over again, right? But it took us some time, but we did it, right? But the problem was that we lacked wisdom. We lacked wisdom. The, we, we, we had all this money, and what did we do? We went and we moved to Texas. We went and we got this big old house. We started to pay $5,500 a month in rent, right? Uh, I can say the only good thing I got out of it was that I bought my car cash and I still have that car until this day because I'm not moved by material things. You see, a lot of people would say, girl, go get you, you know, an expensive truck or an expensive... If the Lord puts it in my spirit to get that, then I will. But at the moment, I don't have anything to prove to anybody. And the things that I get here on earth does not go with me to heaven. So I'm not concerned about trying to show off big trucks and big houses and this and that. When God feels that I'm ready for that, when he feels I have the wisdom, come on now, to carry out that blessing, he will give it to me. But he saw that I didn't lack wisdom and all of those things were taken away. That's a testimony right there. And so now instead of me saying, God, can you, you know, Bless me with another million dollars. Can you bless me with a big house? I'm like, God, give me enough that I can handle. I'm spiritually mature to know that you have trusted me many of times, and I have shown lack of wisdom, and I have also show, shown lack of irresponsibility or lack of responsibility. Excuse me. I was irresponsible. Y'all got what I was saying. <laughs> and so I know that I have to work 10 times harder this time to show you that I'm ready for that next blessing. But in the meantime, my heart is not lusting for it. I'm not lusting for a big old house. I'm not lusting for a big old car. I'm not lusting for money. I'm seeking the kingdom, and I mean really seeking the kingdom. Me, my husband, and my kids, my entire house serves the Lord. We seek the kingdom, all things are added on to us. When I tell you that we lack nothing because we put him, we put him first wholeheartedly, I mean, I'm talking about to the point where I used to literally worry about money. I would cry. You know, when I seen that we blew all this money, I said, what did I do? And I would literally cry. I was so depressed. I used to get drunk all the time, you know, and I would just cry. I was always miserable. I was unhappy. And, you know, what helped me was really fasting and praying. I started to fast. I started to pray. That changed my life. That was what helped me break a lot of bondages, right? That is what helped me break all the strongholds. That is what helped me wake up and have that, you know, spiritual awakening with Christ. And what helped me just grow tremendously. I mean, people look at me and they tell me, wow, you're not the same person. You want people to be able to tell you you're different. And that was, I wasn't doing it for people. I was doing it for me and for my relationship with God. I was doing it for God first and for me. Um, and, you know all honor and glory to him that a lot of people can see that difference in me. But, you know, I was that girl that was always greedy and always wanted just a lot of money and just was just all over the place, you know. And now I can tell you that, you know, although my husband and I were grateful that we don't lack anything, even if I was lacking, I would still have faith. Because there has never been a time that out of nowhere, miraculously, my bills have been paid. Out of nowhere, miraculously, food ended up on the table, right? And not even miraculously. When I say miraculously, I'm not talking about luck. 
because nobody's lucky. I'm talking about miraculously through the grace of God, giving him the honor and glory. He has never failed me, right? And so for this reason, I don't have anything to worry about. And so anyways, getting back to the scripture, because I can go left a lot, Solomon asks for wisdom. So I want you to ask yourself today, what do I need to ask God for? Instead of saying, God, you know, can I just have money or can I have this or can I, you're not grown. That's not grown. Even if he gives it to you, it's still not going to make you happy because you lack wisdom. You need to grow spiritually. You need to get in your word. You need to start warring in the spirit. You need to go to church. You need to put God first. God wants to give you so many things. He wants to open so many doors and he will, he will do that for you. But first you need to get that wisdom. And now we are going to go to 1 Corinthians chapter 14, and we're going to end right here, where Paul is literally telling us to seek spiritual gifts. Okay, so right here in Corinthians chapter 14, verse 1, it says, follow the way of love and eagerly desire gifts of the spirit, especially prophecy for anyone who speaks in tongue does not speak to people, but to God. Indeed, no one understands them. They utter mysteries by the spirit, but the one who prophesies speaks to the people for their strengthening, encouraging and comfort. And we're going to stop right there, right? We're going to stop right there. I always hear a lot of people say, you know, I wish I can speak in tongues. And you know, they feel like if they spoke in tongues, they will feel more powerful. And you know, I used to be the same person. I would feel the same way. I would say, God bless my tongue. And although he has blessed my tongue, but I'm not still fully like, how can I say it? Like I'll get a couple of, um, like a couple of, like the Holy Spirit will allow me to flow through tongues. Like a couple of words will come out, right? But not to the point where like my apostle, she says she can pray two hours in tongues. And I'm like, that's goals. <laughs> you know, like that's my kind of goals nowadays. Me, it's like, I'll say a couple and then I think I get nervous and I'm like, oh God, okay, let me just pray regularly. Right. And this is me being honest with you guys. Cause I don't want to act like I'm better than anyone. And I want to be able to look at back at this one day. And when you guys see me fully flowing in tongues, you can be like, oh my God, I remember when she said she couldn't go that long speaking in it, but look at her now just flowing. Right. But here, right here, it's even telling us that prophecy is better than tongue. Because when you speak in prophecy, the person understands what you are saying, right? And they are able, God is able to get the glory. It is promises from the Lord where the Holy Spirit can use you to give you a promise, right? Whereas with tongues, unless there's interpreter, unless there's an interpreter to tell you what they said, yeah, you might feel something was like, but it's like, you don't even know what they said. You know what I'm saying? Only God knows what they said. And so if someone is speaking tongues over you, that's great. But I, I asked them, can you a lot, like, can the Holy Spirit reveal to you what did you just say? Or can you get an interpreter to tell me what you just said, right? Because if not, you know, it's great. You know, speaking in tongues is a great gift. But prophecy, prophecy is, it's literally telling you prophecies is one of the ways that you are able to strengthen, encourage, and comfort other people. So right here, it is literally telling you, right? Paul is telling you about Corinthians, about how, you know, he wants you to prophesy, right? And how, you know, speaking in tongues doesn't really speak to our generation because no one knows what you are saying, right? Yes, it is a desirable gift, right? It says right here, it is a desirable gift, but it is less important to the whole body of believers than prophecy. Believers need unity and love. Our enemies are not each other, but Satan and his evil forces, right? And so, you know, it says, although Paul himself spoke in tongues, he stresses the importance of prophecy because it, because it benefits the whole church, while speaking in tongues only benefits the speaker. So God is, so right here, Paul is telling you in Corinthians, seek the spiritual gifts. Seek to prophesy, seek to share promises with God's people so that they could be encouraged, so that they could be uplifted. Allow God to use you. Make a decision that from this day forward, you are going to seek the kingdom and that all things will be added onto you and that you're going to let God use you and you're going to let him transform you and you're going to close the door to old ways. It's never too late. You might be thinking, oh, it's too late. I've messed up for too long. God is angry with me. Let me tell you. You don't want to leave this world not making things right with God. The Bible literally tells us those that do not repent, God will not forgive. You have to repent. You have to seek God. You have to put him first. 
It's not too late. It's not. Those are the lies of the enemy. You still have time to turn things around. All right. And so I'm going to close out with a prayer. I pray that you love this video. If you did, I want you to leave a comment below. If you want, tell me what you loved about it in the comments. If you want a part two, because I still have so much more to say, comment part two. Okay. And let me pray for you. So Father God, I just want to come before you, Lord. And I ask that you bless the person that is listening to this video. Father, I ask that you remind them that it is never too late to turn around and to seek you, Father God. I cancel the thoughts of the enemy upon their life, Father God. Everything that the enemy is telling them, Lord, we cancel those thoughts. We bind, break, and rebuke it. And we send it back. We send it back to the sender. We send it back to Satan and all his minions, all the way back to the pits of hell, Father God, because we know that greater is he that is within us than he that is in the world. And we know that you are within us, Father. We know that you are always with us, that you never leave us, but that it is us that constantly leaves you when we go back into the ways of the world, Father God. But you're so merciful and you're so graceful that you still always have a loving heart where you keep your arms open, ready for your people to come, come back to you and serve you. And so we thank you for that, Father God. We thank you for being so merciful and so loving and forgiving. And we ask that you can give us that heart, Lord. Give us a merciful, a loving and forgiving God in the mighty name of a loving and forgiving heart in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord. And I ask that you bless this person, that whatever it is that they are lacking, Lord, that you will provide their every need, that miracles will start to happen, finances will start to flow in, Father God, that their health will be restored, marriages will be restored, their children, Father God, will be blessed from the crown of their heads to the soles of their feet. Bless their home, that you bless every single window and every single door, Father God. And I ask that you free them, that you deliver them from any demonic strong holds from any bondages from any unknown covenants that they may have made father god open up their spiritual eyes lord give them dreams give them visions give them hope lord and i ask that you supply their every need in jesus name we pray amen so thank you again for watching this video let me know if you want me to do a part two may god bless you guys may the lord be with you read your bible have a blessed day see you in the next video bye